So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, on the planet. Welcome to this Thursday's Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews, and it's my pleasure and privilege to present Harmonize to Energize every Thursday at the moment at two o'clock New York time, which at the moment in Arizona is 11 in the morning. And um, if some of you weren't aware of that, you're probably not here right now. Anyway, <laughs> good to be here. So for anyone that's completely brand new or watching the replay, Harmonize to Energize embraces the art of Jin Shin Jitsu and more recently modalities that have overlapping connections. Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing life energy, prana, chi or ki, depending on your cultural upbringing, as it moves or not congruently through the, the body. Um, she is understood to be a life energy that you can see when the sun moves through the branches of a tree. It looks like these bluish yellow bullets. And it is understood to uphold all of creation, feeding all our cells. And the art of Jin Shin Jitsu was, well, it's often described as rediscovered um, by a Japanese master of the name of Jiro Murai, Sensei Murai, and he taught it to Mary Burmeister, uh, a Japanese-American who was visiting Japan in the 1940s, early 1940s, and he, he taught her Jin Shin Jitsu and recognized within her a gift to be able to offer this understanding of how to harmonize energy in the body to others, and in particular to America. He said at the time, because America and Japan were like this, he said, um, would you like to bring a gift to America? And she said, you know, I spontaneously said, yeah. <laughs> so intuitively there was a connection between the two of them and their ideas or ideals. And she studied with Master Marai for about five to six years in Japan, then married a, um, a German-American and returned to America. She was from Seattle, Washington, but I believe when she initially returned, she went to Burbank, California. And <clears throat> back in the 70s, 1970s, she had begun practicing this art of Jin Shin Jitsu on others. And there was an occasion, mainly her family, I should clarify, and there was an occasion when a chiropractor friend of hers had to go out of town and he recommended to his client that she visit Mary Burmeister. And really that was the pivotal point for Mary to expose Jin Shin Jitsu, if you wish, or beginning to expose it to a broader level of the public. And from that point on, I believe she began teaching. And bit by bit, <clears throat> the seed sprouted and people began to um, learn about Jin Shin Jitsu. So physiologically speaking, as I said, it talks. we're talking about harmonizing life energy as it goes through the body. How does it do that? In traditional um, oriental medicine, it moves through energy pathways, which are adjusted um, by what um, acupuncturists call points and what we call safety energy locks. There's 26 of them, left and right of the spine, three in the arms. And they all have particular names and qualities. And when we place the palms of our hands, the back of our hands, our fingers, or our thumbs, or if we don't have any of them, just our um, intention on these specific areas of the body, they can adjust the frequency and vibration of that prana, that life force, as it moves through the body and helps, helps the energy to transform the resistance. And the resistance is created, by and large, by our thinking, what we think, our feelings about what we think, 
and what we say, our words, and, and what we do. And in Jin Shin Jitsu, there's a subdivision of three areas of the body where that connection between thinking, saying, and doing, or soul, mind, and body is, <clears throat> is connected and can be harmonized. Recently, um, while I've been teaching by myself, I've been exploring the, the message aspect, the soul aspect, the thought aspect of Jin Shin Jitsu. And we'd reached safety energy lock three, which was the understanding of the door that allows the life energy to boost the immune system. Keeping that whole safety energy lock open allows the energy to boost all the relations with our <clears throat> immune system. And this week, postponed from back in February, we're going to look at safety energy lock four, which connects to safety energy lock three through the supervisor pattern becoming the mediator. We know, or we don't, if we've never been um, taught anything about Jin Shin Jitsu, that as energy moves through the body, it moves from the left side to the right, and it moves down the front of the body, all the way down from head to toe, and then from toe to head, starting with the left side. And then after a few of these circulations, this is all unmanifest, by the way, it weaves over to the right side, and it weaves over to the right side, um, which is called the weaving princess, via safety energy lock four, which is the occipital lobes, left and right. And then as it weaves to the four, it moves over the frontal area of the head, the temples, and all the way back down the body, down the right side of the body, and then up the back of the right side of the body and it can sit and then it goes back to the left and it continues this weaving process until at one point it connects with safety energy lock three and moves energy in our arms first to the left again and then to the right creating the mediator flow which brings those left and right sides of the body which the four connects back to center oneness which is the spine or for Jin Shin Jitsuists, the main central. So what do we know? Uh, what do we experience about Safety Energy Lock 4? Well, um, let's have a look at the screen. Let's have a look. I'll share the screen. we got a PowerPoint here. So in the self-help books that Mary Burmeister wrote on page 18, she describes, discusses number four, safety energy lock. And you can see there, there it is under the occiput. You might want to connect there now, just feel those bony protuberances to the base of the skull here. And Mary gives descriptions and uh, interestingly, on the left, she relates this to vision, and we'll see why in one of her practices. And she says, self-change starts with self-study. Shallow breathing causes disharmony. Deep breathing results in a loving personality. And um, I'm glad she did put that here, because as I discuss how we connect with Safety Angel Lock 4, we'll re-familiarize ourselves with how we exhale down the front from the four all the way through the 15 to safety engine lock seven and back again, starting with that left side and the exhale. Some of you I happen to know have difficulty exhaling and sometimes perhaps we all do and that's often to do with some kind of resistance, maybe fear, 
Now, number four actually resonates on many levels, and one of them is the fourth depth in Jin Shin Jitsu, the fourth level of consciousness. Can you um, mute yourself, please? And that relates to harmonizing fear, and we'll make a connection to why that might be relevant to Safety Angel Lock 4 too. I'm going to mute you if you don't do it yourself. Did it do it. Got it. So if you are, just to begin with this process of the exhale and then moving to the inhale, if you are having difficulty letting go, dropping your shoulders, smiling, number one, smiling actually helps the fours open. It stretches the sternocleid and mastoid muscles, which pull back on the four. And the four came into the universe, meaning measuring intelligence, measuring out to each body energy function all its needs from the exhaustless abundance of our source, the window admitting light and air. Know myself, infinite truth, infinite self, impersonal self. So, you know... If you don't feel like smiling, okay, fake it till you make it. <laughs> because, in fact, it will open the, the four more, number one. And number two, as you allow more energy to circulate down the front, starting the left-hand side, the exhale, you might want to pull in the, your abdominal reason, region, which is controlled by the diaphragm. And those of you that know Jin Shin Jitsu will know that the diaphragm helps the exhale. Pull those muscles in, actually all the way around that abdominal diaphragm umbilicus area is a relationship to kidney function energy. And the kidney snatches energy from the lungs and the body of the life breath. Do that if you can't exhale. Let's experiment. Breathe out. And as you breathe out, pull in those abdominal muscles. And then naturally receive the breath, more light energy. And let those abdominal muscles expand. And that neatly, at least for me, connects us to the idea of those messages which help us expand or we prefer them to help us expand rather than contract. But it's not like that the contraction doesn't have value. It's just that in terms of the soul level, the message, we want to feel expanded. Now... The more we contract with our muscles, the more we let go. Isn't it true, possible, that we could let go of more of the disharmony? Pull those muscles in for a bit as you exhale. And naturally, let them expand. Has that helped you let go more? You might even feel like smiling more if you weren't before. Now combine the two. Smile and contract. <laughs> and inhale and expand. Keep up the smiling, if you wish. Move into the 21 and unburden your head of any of our thoughts. If this is not making sense, I'm making relationships that hopefully will make more sense as we work through this. <laughs> but there are some connections here. How does that feel? You know, the more we let the measuring intelligence allow the quantity and quality of light to enter, through the fours, 
<clears throat> it will actually get transferred via the medulla oblongata into the cerebrum and into the amygdala. And anyone who knows about physiology will know that the amygdala plays a big role in controlling fight and flight, how we react to danger. So four again, fourth depth, fear. Lots to connect here, but think about it. If you open the window of your intelligence, your consciousness, to let in more light, maybe the forgive and the forget. You give more light to a situation, you get a clearer picture of what's really going on. Making sense? And sometimes we struggle to forgive, give more light to a situation. For emotional reasons, I don't like that person or I don't like what they said. But, you know, if you practice enough giving, forgiving more light, you will get more light on the situation unless you resist. And then you need to do this <laughs> and smile more, pull in those muscles and let it go, drop the shoulders, blah, blah, blah. Am I... Perfectly versed in this skill? No way. <laughs> in fact, these days I often find I have to do this a lot more. Let go. Let go of thoughts that do not serve. All right. So, enough of the talk for now. Let's just... Relax, allow the fours to open more with those new ideas, perhaps, the smile and the contraction of the abdomen on the exhale. Allow that energy to go down the front through the 15s, fill our hearts with joy and laughter, all the way to number seven, victory, perfect life power, and then turn around at the seven, go up through the two, wisdom, life force for all creatures, and back to the four again. Just allow that to happen. And <clears throat> you can do that by holding the four with the 15. I've, I've suggested this before. Or the 13. Whichever you feel connected to. The point being, as we let go, using those particular safety energy locks, letting in more light, filling our heart with joy and laughter, or 13 and 4, harmonize, love thy neighbors. We're going to listen to the message that we're currently entertaining in our consciousness. And if it's not very harmonious, let it go. And allow our soul, 13 area, is where we connect to the soul and also the 4, which relates to 13 of the bus line and see what message of harmony we can think of. Waltraud, um, as I mentioned before, has affirmations on her cards, and hers are, visions come true, or I welcome heaven into my life. I like that. I welcome heaven, the head, the head consciousness, actually the heavenly consciousness, the subtler realms, into my life or I welcome harmony into my life nine exhalation inhalations and see what's the message for you today here we go Oh, I see we got 13 participants. How interesting. <laughs> and if your hand gets tired at the four, 
drop it to the 13. 13 is a higher manifestation of the four frequency. And so you're exhaling and if necessary, contracting the abdominal muscles, allowing the energy to go to the feet and then receiving the breath if necessary, expanding the abdominal muscles. And this could help you seed a harmonious message. By the way, in case you're wondering, anyone, Mary B. did not teach the contraction and expansion method as far as I'm aware. Feel your feet connecting to the earth via the seven. Let what you don't need go and receive the harmony. You know, as part of first depth, which is what search engine looks one to four are, the understanding is that you've really arrived in your body. So this is this golden opportunity to structure or restructure your consciousness. Embody. Embody the message. Let any fears that may be circulating around your consciousness via the amygdala, let them dissolve. Let the energy move down to the 13 from the cerebrum, to the 15 to be blessed with joy and laughter. Or just joy. Mary called um, fear full, false evidence appearing real, the illusion. Doesn't often feel like that, though, does it, when we're really scared? Trust that the measuring intelligence of the four the window that lets in more light will give us the wisdom, the insight to harmonize what appears to be real, but in fact may well be an illusion. Trust. As we receive more harmonious messages, the heart opens. We connect to our intuitive impulses through the abdomen, through the gut. We receive signals to help us. So forgive, my friends and forget more energy, more insight, more understanding. That's what we want, isn't it? Clarity of consciousness. Why is this happening? Oh, I see. Number four is to do with vision. The highest level. Mary said the soul enters 
the body through the four. And also leaves. That's interesting, isn't it? My understanding that is the reincarnating soul. We know from Jin Shin Jitsu that the universal soul enters between the 15 and 2 area, the Ming Men, the life force for all creatures, the reincarnating soul enters through the four and leaves. And when you reach the ninth exhalation, inhalation, end of that particular cycle, just observe, witness how you feel, where you feel, or connection. you have with the light within you mm. oh there it is <laughs> Why didn't that work? Oh, there it is. So, there it is, a description of the four, the window to let in more light, all the relationships, key to open the bus line, hard area 13. And possible <clears throat> declarations, my, my visions come true. I welcome universal consciousness into my life. My spiritual ideas manifest easily. I can see clearly, fearlessly. And I put up there, remember, choose a declaration that feels expansive. Connect to your heart, 413, 15, 2. Oh, and 26, 22. So do not worry if you did not come up with a positive declaration message at this point. We're going to do another set of breaths, a couple more sets of breaths, three more, and I receive the breath and see if as you purify, as you let go more and more, maybe a message will come then that's more harmonious. If it doesn't, then you just do more breaths till it does. All right. And so the the first self-help technique that uh, Mary showed, page 19 of self-help before, was to actually hold the uh, right ring finger. That, the fingers are where the safety energy locks are also harmonized different relationships within the art of Jin Shin Jitsu. And of course, this is lung and large intestine, which will help us exhale and inhale. So if this feels comfortable to you to hold the left one, hold that or hold the right one, you just hold it completely. And then you, cut, you capture the organ functions and well, as well as the unmanifest level of the safety energy lock, four. Hold it in your lap, perhaps, at the central 15, to fill your heart with more joy and laughter. Close your eyes. Connect with your four. Let more light come in. Harming the amygdala. Let it drop down from the cerebrum into the heart, the 13, down to the 15, to the seven. Again, if you found that difficult, contract the abdomen. And then the receiving of the energy 
and may be expanding the abdomen. Eight more times, here we go. And uh, by the way, don't worry if your message changes. If you're an air sign by nature, you may have lots of thoughts. <laughs> and you may have lots of harmonious thoughts. And all of a sudden, you may want to shift to one of those. No judgment. Go with your flow. Feel your connection to the ground, to the sevens. And the more you're letting go, the more light you get on the situation, the more light to fill your cells. And the cells, of course, are exhaling and inhaling too, contracting and expansion. You might even feel every cell in your body is letting go and expanding as you introduce a harmonious message. I don't know about you, but I like it that love is a four-letter word. More light. Open the 13. Bring it to the 15. Then to the 7. Victory, perfect life power. So the 2. Life force all creatures, wisdom, 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 wisdom. Back to the four. Do we love ourselves enough? And therefore, do we have enough to share with others? Maybe that's why people always say love and light, yes? Light and love. Love and light, 
Life and love. Forgive, forget. And when you reach the ninth exhalation, inhalation, just go into neutral and feel where you are. Has the message changed? Is it the same? Is it even more powerful, more positive? See how that feels. And then Mary gives jumper cabling or connecting safety engine lock number four with um, the opposite safety engine lock 21. All right. And this really is a connection to um, third depth to the stomach flow, to consciousness around the burdens that we hold in our mind. And it also allows the energy of the four to go across that weaving princess and light up our vision. Helps sight what we see. And, you know, it also connects to the 20, which relates to third eye vision, which expands our vision beyond the physical senses and is, I believe, hugely connected to our ability to imagine. Imagination. So when we're having this um, message, when we're connecting to this message, sometimes the words will bring an image. And we might want to enhance that image, expand it, colorize it, or we might not. We might just want to stay with the resonance of the, the words. But that safety engine lock 20 will allow us to expand our consciousness further beyond the senses. And if we get a beautiful image, why not allow that to percolate with our message? And in fact, last week with uh, Manjita, we ended up doing this. We ended up putting one hand on our fours and the other hand on the 20 on the forehead and the 21. So we're getting two birds here in one go. We're flying into universal consciousness through the 20 and we're calming at the same time the amygdala because the amygdala sits more or less central brain opposite the frontal temporal lobe here. So we're calming, we're bringing some harmony to the amygdala. And of course, with the, the 21, 
we're harmonizing those thought processes that are burdening us. So let's do that. Cover the eye, put the fingers on the 20, and then have the palm over the 21. And whichever other hand is free, put it on the opposite four. Here we go. Nine exhalation, inhalations. What are you seeing? Vision. Enhance the harmonious images. It's like a colorizing a picture. Enhance them, boost them. If you can. And when you reach the ninth exhalation, inhalation, just pause. Witness again, see how you feel. What's going on with the uh, energy? Did the light from the four expand your imagination, your vision to escape the mental bondage that the 21s can help release and initiate profound security? Maybe, maybe not. So maybe if it's something you want to work on, you can. And then 
Pedaling back to that idea of do we love ourselves enough, Mary doesn't actually mention it here. However, let's do our final four exhalation inhalations with our hug. So 26 will complete, connecting with source and fifth depth. And the thumbs on the 22, which is a higher vibration of safety energy lock four, connecting with 144,000 special function energy in the body. Can't be bad. Let's do it. Let's become it. Breathe out. Contract abdomen if necessary to help the exhale. Allow energy through 15 all the way to 7, 7, 15, 2, 4. Feel, feel the love and the light. Nine more times. Here we go. Receive the abundance. Okay, so when you've reached your thirty sixth breath, the final nine that we've been through. Just observe how you feel, how you see, and what your message is now. I don't know about you folks, but actually this last set of nine had my 20s vibrating with all kinds of fireworks. Um, that tells me that sufficient light has come in through the four and sufficient Mental bondage has dropped for that energy to open my imagination and to connect me 
to a broader frequency of consciousness, universal consciousness. That's my understanding, at least. And uh, nice, pretty colors. <laughs> That's not to impress you. It's just like it's a flag that once you start experiencing those kinds of um, responses, the light is activating within you at a higher dimensional level to create harmony, to clear any negativity, and to give you vision. And while it's doing that at that higher frequency, it's improving your vision because that's how you can heal your vision. You bring in a higher dimension of light. That's it. And then you get to love your eyes a bit more and loving that eye, the letter I, as well as your eyes. And, you know, we talked about first death. Uh, yeah, welcome, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, I believe all our physical vision vision is to do with our mental and spiritual vision. What we're thinking about, the message we're giving. And uh, I mentioned already, Waltraud said um, her understanding of first depth. I have arrived in my body. She also says underneath that, I love myself as I am. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> what does she mean? As I am, I don't need to change, or the I amness. Yes. I would say it's a balance between the two. Don't drive yourself into the imbalance of first depth and keep worrying you're not good enough. You are at where you are. And love your I am, your universal connection to your soul. Love that as well. Reincarnating soul, universal soul, the marriage, the one. As far as I'm aware, so far on my journey, that's the that's the division. That's where we benefit most. That's when we really do forgive and forget and become one with all that is. And the light then can be seen everywhere, not just entering the fours, under a rock or a stone, through the trees, those bullets of prana. It's everywhere. And then, of course, the next stage, eighth depth, the sound. You might start hearing the sound. And then one day, you may be with, <clears throat> at the beginning, the nine the no thing at all, the simple stillness, the silence, the just complete wholeness. Let's just allow the message to percolate now even deeper before we say au revoir. What have you received and what do you want to radiate and reflect from this point on, at least for today? Feel your heart, higher dimension of 413, love thy neighbors, feel that 22 area connecting to all those special functions. You're welcome, Shani. And then through down 15. To Mother Earth, which is actually representative of first depth.
we become embodied. Beautiful. All right. <clears throat> How was that? Did it help? Did it help the struggle to exhale for some of you by contracting your abdomen? If it didn't, don't use it. Maybe you need to do some abdominal exercises or something. <laughs> um, play with it. Any questions? Oh, Dragana. Is that how you pronounce it? It cleaned my eyes. Yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. There is a cleaning going on at one level, the light, as we bring it in through the four. It's an incredible purifier to the higher dimension than... Um, the sunlight, it's beyond that. It's in, it's, to most people, it's invisible, but it's definitely a cleaner. So for any of you, like me, who's had to start wearing glasses, found that useful, or that, you can do that exercise and remember the um, <clears throat> the ring finger. For those of you that found it, not particularly activating just to hold the ring finger. You can always add the thumb, put the pad of the thumb over the ring finger. Now that expands the whole thoracic cavity. Again, helping the lungs to exhale, inhale. You can do that. Or you can just kick back and lay back and hold your fours, massage in between the occipital area. When you're doing the main central, you don't have to put the right hand on the head. You can actually put the right hand on the fours. Because actually that is where the light enters, through the fours. As it goes down and spirals and cleans out the spinal chakras and centers, eventually your whole body can be filled with light. And this seventh energy center opens up this lotus at the crown. And then the whole body is filled completely with light. It's resonating completely with the universal light. But this is the um, the window that, that actually where it enters. Um, I know some teachings say, you know, the light comes out. Yes, it does. But that's not initially where it enters the human form. It's the force. This lotus has to open. And then when the crown chakra opens, yes, yes. Big column of light. Shh. Those of you that practice Kundalini yoga, you're doing it that way. Same principle from earth to heaven, spiraling up. Boom. In fact, it's possibly how most people will open their crown chakra is through some understanding of the supervisor energy curling around um, the spine, the caduceus, and that will eventually um, blast open the crown chakra too. All right. So as I don't see any, um, what was that, Anne? It was like receiving light, like, coloring it and sending it on. Beautiful. Yeah. So um, that's it from me today. In uh, 24 to 48 hours, I'll put the replay up. Um, I'll be joined by Jenny Swayzeki. Swayzeki. Uh, apologies, Jenny, if you're listening. Um which I'm really looking forward to next week. Her and I will join heart and hands together, or hands and heart. Um, and we'll be we're moving into second depth. It's the 21st uh, of March, and it's long, large intestine, second depth. And in fact, it's long, it's Aries. And Jenny will bring her distinctive insights and share with you all. And we will partner together to embrace that whole Aries energy, the beginning, the new beginning, spring. 
the sprouting of new seeds, new messages, um, if you will. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Jenny is a long-term practitioner and a good friend. And uh, I know most of you that have spent time with her find it as delightful as I do. So pencil it in next Thursday with Jenny Swayzeki. All right. Let's just stop the recording.